Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. I am Adamless for today. He, uh, he's he got a bunch of things going on, but have no fear. We are going to have a great conversation. I got one of my good friends coming back to join me today, Kinsey Sch Schofield. I screw up her name every goddamn time. <laughs> Kinsey, I'm so sorry. I know you're in the background laughing at me here, um, but uh, I love Kinsey. She is one of my... Uh, favorite people to talk to when it comes to all things royal she uh her her knowledge of the royal family is unlike anyone else i've ever seen and i just feel like this is the moment that we should be talking about the royals the fa the fascination is on an all-time high um I, I think the, the the drama surrounding Meghan and Harry, but this cancer diagnosis with, with Kate Middleton and how it really just flipped the world upside down from this uh, you know, people poking fun at her to holy shit, what have we done? So I'm gonna have Kinsey on here in a, a couple minutes. Uh, let me get to a review real fast. This one comes from oh Jesus, uh, Mister Doctor Chad Man Witten work. Okay. Five stars, BravoCon, yes. The BravoCon Adventures with Melissa Rivers was so fun to listen to. She is a delight. Please have her on for an interview. It'd be so fun to hear all her insider experiences and, of course, anything about her iconic mom. Uh, guys, honestly, that was probably one of the my favorite episodes I've ever done is running around BravoCon with Melissa Rivers. Everyone recognized her. Everyone had so much fun talking to her. Uh, she is a blast to hang out with. And we've had her on the podcast. And we will absolutely have her back. Um, so have no fear. But uh, Melissa is one call away. All right. Let's get on to the biggest topic in the world right now. Besides P. Diddy, of course. And that is Kate Middleton. So I'm going to bring in my buddy, uh, Kinsey Schofield, who I'm not going to screw up your name again, uh, who is the host of the To Die For podcast and the To Die For Daily dot com uh, website. Um, Kinsey, how are you? I'm uh, I, I haven't slept in like three weeks, but otherwise I... I'm, I know otherwise it's you. You, me you messaged me last week and you said, hey, a lot's going on in the royal world we should get together and do kind of a recap. And I said, yes. And I think it was 24 hours later that we found out mm -hmm. that the Princess of Wales had cancer. Uh, so, I mean, the story has evolved so quickly since the last time we spoke. Um, and just to give you some perspective, I'm sure everyone has seen the video because I think it's almost like Princess Diana's accident or, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like you stopped and, and you, you listened no matter what you stopped, what you were doing to listen to this video yep. and watch this video of the princess of Wales. Um, and we have a little bit more information about it. We do understand now that princess Kate discovered her cancer diagnosis on February 27th. And that is the same day that Prince William pulled out of his godfather's memorial service 45 minutes before he was expected to arrive. And there was a lot of gossip about that and a lot of speculation on the news. Why would Prince William pull out for personal reasons, you know, 45 minutes before his godfather's memorial service, a lot of criticism surrounding the family because it was Prince Andrew that fronted the entire family walking into the memorial. And, you know, that stirred up a lot of the online chaos again. Well, it must be really bad. Things must be really bad at home if Prince William's going to um, miss the memorial of his godfather. And now we understand that he and his wife had just found out that after her planned abdominal surgery, which was, I believe, January 16th, it was mid-January, after that planned abdominal surgery that we found out was a success. She spent a few weeks in the hospital for recovery. We were told we wouldn't see her until Easter. She gets a call on February 27th that there was some cancer there and that they believe that and I think the word preventative is good and we should focus on that, but they would like to pursue chemotherapy to ensure that things don't get worse. Um, now, she said that the reason it took them so long to share it with us, 
And again, I'd reiterate, not that they owe us anything. I mean, once once we all saw this video, I think a lot of us thought, oh my gosh, we're horrible people. But um, she wanted to make sure that the children had time to process this. She's got three young children, the youngest five. And on Friday, the day that she announced this, it was a half day for them because they were leading into their Easter holiday. Uh, so she wanted to ensure that they didn't go to school facing tough questions about their mother's health, scary questions about cancer. Um, so she wanted to tell the world heading into their Easter holiday since that releasing that video that was filmed on a Wednesday, released on a Friday, both the Prince and Princess of Wales and their three children have gone off to Norfolk for their holiday, and that's where they're going to stay for the entire month and just zen and just spend time with each other and just try to have some peace and quiet. So we won't see Prince William until ap after April 17th. And you know, the goalpost has moved when it comes to when we'll see Kate again, because she was saying, hopefully she'll see us at Easter. Hopefully she'll see us after Easter. Um, but it's going to take a little bit longer now that she's going through chemotherapy to be in a position to be able to engage with people safely you know, her, you know, her immune system is going to be under attack, so she can't really engage with people the way uh, that royals normally do with a thousand handshakes and selfies. Um, but she is working from home and she has been for a significant amount of time, uh, responding to emails, planning events in the future, okaying things with the, the early years projects. And so I, I think it's important to, to say that she's been trying to contribute as much as she can to the royal family. And I know that they look especially vulnerable right now with not just two, but three royals that have cancer, King Charles, the Princess of Wales, and the Duchess of York, Fergie. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's honestly crazy. Like you said, you know, last week we were just texting each other like, oh, let, let's get on. Let's, let's chat about everything because the curiosity surrounding the royal family, I feel like is that an all time high right here in the US at least for sure. I mean, besides when Harry and Meghan left, I feel like this is that secondary peak of like everyone wants to know about. It. I've got people stopping me in the office and people that are sports people and going, <laughs> okay, like what's going on? You gotta give me the inside gossip on what's happening with the Royals. And I'm like, I, I literally don't know. Like, I don't know why she's been out of the spotlight. Um, that being said, because obviously there was so many jokes, there were so many speculations, and there were so many rumors flying around for a while. Do you feel like do you feel like it was warranted because of how quiet they were and just because of how public of a family they are that and I don't necessarily want to put blame on people because that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? That's people make jokes and stuff like that. But do you feel like because they were so quiet, it led to more speculation, what led to like this bigger curiosity? And like, should we give people the grace of going, you didn't know what was going on, you made jokes and let's move on? Hmm. Well, well, can I just say, because I've had this asked to me a couple of times, and mostly by American outlets, like, was this a PR fail? And I think, you know, when it comes to the royal family, we kind of look at them as a corporation, the firm, more so than we look at them as fam, you know, like a real family. Um, but I would like to stress that when it comes to some of that online speculation, The Independent, which is a very well-respected media outlet in the UK, has reported that Whitehall, the UK government, is concerned that China, Russia, and Iran were deliberately fueling disinformation campaigns about the Princess of Wales online to destabilize the nation. Uh, and they also reference those King Charles death hoax from a few weeks ago, saying that those were intentional campaigns uh, disinformation campaigns that were circulating in Russia by official Russian media outlets they're, uh, to destabilize the nation. You know, we look at the, the royal family or we look at, um, you know, the UK. And, and I think a lot of people kind of envy that envy how I don't know, glamorous it can look. It looks strong. It's it's something that's been um, functioning for such a significant amount of time. Uh, and so maybe some of those adversaries would 
envy it or try to create confusion or chaos within their news cycles by kind of circulating some of these bots or whatever. But, you know, I, I know that there are real people that are behind a lot of the, the chatter online, but I also think some of those people might have been influenced by some of this disinformation that is is you know clearly being investigated currently. Um, I think that the monarchy ha has tried to mon modernize, and in doing so, there's been a couple of hiccups. Like clearly, the Princess of Wales's Mother Day Mother's Day photo. Mm -hmm. uh, that while they're trying to modernize, I I do, I do think it's out of their hands. They can't control. They they lost control of the narrative. They tried to control the narrative by telling us in January the Princess of Wales is not going to be back till Easter and we're not going to give you regular updates. Then this random reporter in Spain announces on live oh sorry i'm giving i'm doing the thumbs up and now everybody's seeing the thumbs up here i haven't been able to figure out how to turn it off i know it's a thing um, but a random reporter in spain announced that the princess had complications during her january surgery and was in a coma and so now you've got um a legitimate typically a legitimate news source reporting something so scary and you see this basically domino effect of that story circulating i mean it, it got to the point where the palace did have to come out despite saying hey we're not going to give you regular updates they had to come out and say this is not true she's this this is the most ludicrous thing we've ever heard um i think media kind of lost control of it too uh, the fact that I would go on national respected outlets and have to answer questions like, is there an affair? Is there domestic violence? I mean, I'd I, somebody asked me that, was there domestic violence? And this is, these are not well, sourced accusations. These are online conspiracy theories that are just circulating on TikTok that have somehow um, translated into the mainstream media. I mean, isn't that, to me, that's crazy because I've worked in serious newsrooms for years and I can't imagine sitting around a pitch table and somebody going, well, 3,000 3, people watched this video on TikTok, so we should ask this person if it's true, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think that we've all lost control of social media. So I don't necessarily blame the palace for not having control of that, you know, when are the social media companies going to be held accountable for some of the vicious things that are clearly not true that as, is being said online by, you know, pur purple four, four, six, seven, five, nine that circulates and blows up like crazy when there's no credibility to that profile whatsoever, but people just like the gossip. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what that like boundary is because obviously the Royal family is the Royal family because they've, they've put so much of their life out on display, right? Like they, they've but Dax, they really, the... they really haven't. It's never complain, never explain. What is the queen's favorite color? What's her favorite TV? I mean, I'm talking about queen Elizabeth, not even Camilla. What is the queen's favorite color? What was her favorite TV show? Do you know her favorite book? You know, we don't know a lot about these people. We see a lot of them, yeah. but we, we truly don't know a lot. I about guess I don't mean people. their inner workings. We probably don't know that much. You know what I'm saying? But like, because they are probably the most famous family on the planet and th their I don't want to say their job but their their duty is to be the public face of an entire country you know that I feel like they are the most high profile you can really get so there is a certain level of, like I try to balance of like what, where are we going too far? Are we allowed to talk about that? Are are they allowed? Are, should they be putting out more information quicker? Like, I don't know anymore. I feel like those boundaries have blurred so much over the years that like, we expect so much out of celebrities and high profile people. And like, we feel that we have a right to know every detail of their lives. When I remember when I had my cancer diagnosis, I didn't want to tell anyone right away. Like, yeah. It, I it took me a while to process what was happening and to like explain to my children and be like, hey, it's all good. Like, don't worry about it. like it took me a good month or so before I wanted to talk to anyone so I can understand why I should be quiet about it. And not only that, I'm a nobody. 
you know what I'm saying? Like my my you're diagnosis somebody is you're somebody <laughs> my diagnosis is not going to make worldwide headlines like hers is, you know, and think everyone about it, then knows your business. Think about it too. Like within seconds of that, where she again pleads for privacy, you have every doctor in the United States, every, every I saw every doctor coming on and with the very little bit of information she gave us, we're trying to diagnose her on international television. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, it's her, I think I'm hearing that it's early. So it looks good. Things are looking good. I mean, I, it's, like you said, having to process that mentally, but then was she in a position to run away and hide? Because you, if you are dealing with that mentally, having to watch the world react to it has mm -hmm. to be uh, emotionally draining as well. And if you're in a, if you're the type of person that you, you want to stay positive and you want to have a good outlook on things, it's difficult to receive information about yourself and not allow it to affect you. Although I, just, I think she's probably pretty good at it by now. Yeah, I guess I just, my conflict comes in like I have a hard time with people like crucifying Blake Lively for posting a tweet that was like, seemingly funny in the moment without all the information she's kind of poking fun at the photoshopping fail and i don't feel like people should crucify her for that she didn't know just like the world didn't know and a photoshopping fail is something that is funny it's light it's it's jokey you know and so then to go back and say well look at what you made fun of you made fun of her and she was dealing with cancer like those are the parts that i'm like guys she didn't know Let's be yeah. realistic. She didn't know. Give her some grace here. Just like there was a lot of people that didn't know. And it was a worldwide trending topic. So they jumped on board. Can I just say really quickly about where the balance is when it comes to the royal family? And you're probably going to disagree with me on this. So I'm just going to go yeah. ahead and get, I'm probably going to go ahead and put my oh, shield we, on. You, know, you and I have always agreed to disagree on certain <laughs> topics with the royal family. Well, here we go. I feel like Harry and Meghan changed the game of what was expected information wise from the British yeah. royal family because they were very secretive and protective. Um, you know, the first time we saw, you know, purposeful leaks or um, an overshare was the the original, the OG Princess of Wales, not the OG OG, but for our lifetime, Princess Diana. Princess Diana secretly worked with Andrew Morton to release Diana, her true story. Uh, and they both denied that she had anything to do with that book that was clearly, uh, you know, insider information until her death. And that's when Andrew Morton finally came out and said, yeah, she secretly worked with me on this book. That's how I had all of these details. Also, she sat down with BBC's Panorama and that is a very um, salacious, that whole storyline is very salacious because she was being told by the host that people were out to get her. He forged these documents to show her that she was not safe. And so she, she agreed to sit down and talk to this guy with BBC's Panorama because she thought her life was in jeopardy. Uh, and she was very open. She said, there were three of us in this marriage. I mean, that is just the iconic line that stays with everybody mm -hmm. from that interview. Um, but after Princess Diana, the royal family shut down and they changed the rules. They said, you're not going to harass these boys, William and Harry. Um, we're not going to give you that kind of insider info ever again. You know, you lost your privileges because we believe you took the life of Princess Diana in a Paris tunnel. And it really changed the, the whole relationship between the media and um, the royal family going forward. And when we saw that all change drastically, was when Harry and Meghan sat down with Oprah Winfrey and they, they, you know, said, here were all of the problems that went on within the family that we, this is why we are living in America today. Um, you know, and if you want to get specific, Meghan speaks about her mental health. Uh, you know, she talks about how she struggled and she was suicidal throughout the Oprah Winfrey interview. And then a few, man, was it years later? It's after COVID or during COVID. Megan actually writes an op-ed for the New York Times about a miscarriage. So I do think we still consider Harry and Meghan royals. And because we still consider Harry and Meghan royals, and they are as open as they've become about their own personal issues, like a miscarriage or mental health, that we expect more from the royal family in the UK. And we expect more yeah. transparency from them. 
Yeah, no, you're totally right. Like I and what I think throughout all of this, though, I think that Kate Middleton could really do a lot of justice by opening up about her cancer and cancer diagnosis and the journey, because there's so many people around the world dealing with the same stuff and it gives them hope and it gives them, you know, like something, someone bigger than them dealing with the same stuff. And I think that's helpful for a lot of people. I mean, that's why Facebook groups with, you know, people dealing with the same stuff does so well. Um, it's cause you, it makes her even more human. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I, I hope that she uses her platform to like spread awareness or just, Hey, go get yourself checked or, you know, and the, the simple things that people don't think about, you know, and I say it every time I'm like, go get your skin checked because skin cancer is a brutal, brutal bitch. And, yeah. um, it is so easy to slip under the radar, not notice this mole going funky. And so every time I get my opportunity, I, I spread that go check your skin out. Um, but I hope she does the same and maybe she doesn't have to, no one ha is forcing her to, but I think that would be the the bright side of all of this shitty news is that she can use her experience and bring good to the world you know well we have seen a and it happened with king charles too and i wish i could give you the actual numbers because they were incredible i remember reporting on them when they come out and have that initial conversation or that initial statement letting us know that they they have cancer um with king charles and with um well, no, with King Charles, it was enlarged prostate people. There was like a spike in enlarged prostate after he said, I'm going in for this surgery. I don't know how much it spiked when we found out he had cancer. Not, and honestly, we don't, we still don't know what type of cancer either one of them have. And, and as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. I'm going to, I'm going to let them process that and deal with that. And I, I do think inevitably they will come out and, and, you know, communicate with us about that. Um, but there has been a spike in people trying to get in according to UK papers um, for cancer checkups after Catherine's video. So wow. it's like you said, I mean, I think even, I don't even think that was her intention, but that was a, one of the results of that video and good on her for, you know, communicating it that way and it translating to some people like, well, that, I have any, I need to call my doctor back, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I, listen, I'm, I, I think that, that's going to be the big uh, positive outcome or fallout from all of this is just people getting checked, people finding, catching it early, whatever the case is, just um, I, I think that's a good side. In regards to the way that she sat down and, and she opened up, did you, what were your thoughts when you saw that video of her talking about her diagnosis? Well, I sobbed. Um, initially, I was horrified. I, I You know, she's it was, it seemed very vulnerable. And I, I know I've had some people, you know, slap my hand over this, but to me, there was an element of sadness. Mm -hmm. um, and how could there not be? But, you know, everybody wants me to say she's so stoic and strong and she is, but you can be stoic, strong and sad at the same time. Like people are capable of more than one emotion at a time. And why um, would people slap your hand for that? Yeah. She's allowed I, to be I, sad. I, I she's allowed to be want... disappointed. Yeah, I think that they want me to say that she's this, you know, th that she's Wonder Woman, and I believe she is, but I also felt, you know, a, an element of sadness there um, and, you know, just vulnerability. And uh, so I, when I first saw it, I was, my heart sank because while I have been told in the background that it is bad, and I might have even said it on your podcast, people are going to regret making fun of it. They're going to be embarrassed. They're going to feel guilt by, you know, carrying on, you know, making this woman a punchline. I had said that a couple of times and that's, but that's all I knew. Like, I did not know what this was. Um, so when I heard cancer, which I had never assumed it could be because Fergie has cancer and the King has cancer and one in two people have cancer. So the amount, the, the fact that three people in the royal family. I mean, it just never occurred to me. And she's so young and just, she's like the fit, beautiful princess that we always see. Um, when we met her, she was on ski slopes or she was paddling in the water. And we always just saw her as this girl that was just basking in the, the glow of the sun and just the outside 
girl, you know, she's not a girly girl until she evolved into this mom and, and princess. But when she was dating Prince William, she was like the sporty girl. Um, and so I, I think I had a hard time processing it for sure. And, um, you know, what we know now about that speech is she wrote it on her own. Like she, there was no help from the palace or the communications team. Uh, she wanted to record it on her own. Um, Prince William offered to be there and she said, no, this is a conversation. I want this to be an intimate conversation between me and our people. Uh, and Do you think, does she use like, I'm just logistic, does she use like a teleprompter or is this something that she just talks? I'm just curious of how it all uh, goes so, down. So she is, work. she this is important. She really was horrified by that photoshopped photo. That was an innocent mistake. There was nothing sinister about that. She wanted to present the best possible photo to the world. So in recording this video, she does want to work with an official news outlet to ensure that everybody knows that it's credible. So she works with the BBC. There's not a teleprompter. This is a speech that she writes and she memorizes. And I think that there are probably some parts that actually come from the heart. Um, but she's done this all on her own. She does rope in the BBC to record and discuss distribute it to ensure that everybody knows that it's credible and there are no questions as to whether or not it's fake. Although if you open up Twitter, you see that people are still having oh, yeah. that debate. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, she recorded it on Wednesday. She has a private lunch, which apparently is a very unique thing between her and King Charles on Thursday, where they're kind of talking about how how is the world going to react to this news coming friday and then they release that video on friday and then pack up the kids head to norfolk and um i think that they're just kind of loving on each other right now yeah is there i don't know how to ask this question and also have not people just crucify me for it but um do you feel like in some sort of way that there's been so much bad publicity surrounding the royal family for the last couple of months that this cancer news has really softened a lot of people's hearts. And I don't want to say it's a good thing because it's not a good thing, but I feel like there's been a lot more sympathy for this family that has been judged so hard recently. If that, I don't know if I'm asking it properly without sounding like an asshole, but I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm saying here. I understand what you're saying. I do think that people are giving them grace today that they weren't giving them two weeks ago. I mean, yeah. two weeks ago, I was getting direct messages from family members I haven't spoken to in 30 years from Arkansas saying, is Prince William cheating on Kate? You know, and those conversations are over. Uh, so I do think that people are giving them grace. People are sympathizing with them because it's like you said, we all have experienced it or we all know somebody that's experienced cancer and it is scary. And it, and it's, um, it, there is no, there are no guarantees. And people understand that. And they, you know, uh, immediately think about somebody that they love or the multiple people that they love that they've lost to it. So uh, I think that um, that people are much more sympathetic today. And, uh, and if you're not, then what is wrong with you is my question. <laughs> How did uh, how did uh, Megan and Harry find out about the the cancer news? Did they find out like the rest of us when Catherine did her speech? Do they get a heads up? Like I don't even know what their relationship is like any longer with with the royal family. Yeah, so um, Harry and Megan found out uh, live on television the way that most of the world found out. Um, Catherine's immediate family was in the know. That's Carol and Michael Middleton, her brother, James, her sister, Pippa, the king and queen consort were aware. And uh, she had made the children aware before that TV address. Um, and yeah, I, I, Harry and Meghan found out the way we found out. It's my understanding that they just, the family wanted to ensure that it remained a secret until they were ready to release it. And they're not necessarily in a position yet to where they trust Harry and Meghan. Um, but Harry and Meghan, which surprised me, I felt like we'd hear from Harry and Meghan at least 24 hours after hmm. the princess's video. Um, but within hours of that video's release, Harry and Meghan released a statement saying that they wish the princess, uh, well, they said they wished Kate health and healing and 
that they hoped that she was allowed the privacy to do to, to do so. Now, you say you were surprised. Did you think that they were going to wait for a certain reason? Or why do you feel like that 24 hour mark was significant? To let the conversation happen around Kate before it becomes how did Harry and Meghan find out? What is Harry and Meghan's reaction? Because you know that that's the second, the second that they release a statement, that's what the conversation becomes. And I think that that's not necessarily their fault because had they not released the statement, the conversation would be what is is Harry and Meghan's reaction? Do Harry and Meghan know how did Harry and Meghan find out? So they probably just wanted to nip it in the bud as quickly as possible. Um, mm -hmm. But my first instinct was they'll allow this to settle for a little while before they comment on it so that the conversation can really be about her. But I don't think that they had I don't I, I think that that's kind of like a double edged sword. How do we yeah. respond? We're going to get in trouble either way. We're going to be criticized either way. Damned if we do, damned if we don't. So I saw some headlines out there and you can tell me your thoughts on them. But I saw some headlines saying this might be a way to kind of mend the rift between the two brothers and their families like, you know, this cancer diagnosis might actually bring them together because a lot of like that happens a lot in families cancer or just shitty things in life bring families back together what are your thoughts on that oh uh, i just think that well i've heard that prince william so i believe harry possibly Meghan, are expected to be in the uk in may and what i have heard so far is that prince william and, and the princess of wales do not want to see harry in may because with harry comes drama uh, and they're just trying to have a peaceful process like they're just trying to deal with this this day by day and they they don't want the drama that comes with it so that's what i know do i think just in general these types of things can lead to some sort of reconciliation um i think it needs to happen with king charles first mm -hmm. and it, organically if he's around their their dad perhaps things can slowly process for for you know that process can begin for the brothers um but from what i understand prince william Wait, so is is harry supposed to see his dad when in may um in may he's there for an, an invictus event yep. so okay. i assume he'll try to see his father mm -hmm. um but when it comes to uh, prince william's hostility towards harry I have always heard it wasn't Harry talking about his receding hairline or how he no longer looked like their mother. Some of those petty things that were involved or inside of the book Spare. It wasn't because he talked about breaking the dog bowl or his necklace and that fight in Spare. It was that he went after Catherine, the Princess of Wales in the book and went, you know, posted line for line text messages between the Princess of Wales and Meghan Markle and Spare, which some might consider a violation of privacy, uh, despite Harry going, you know, and fighting all of these court battles for privacy between him and his wife. It's always, according to um, my sources, Prince William's biggest issue with Harry was that he felt like he attacked his wife. And, you know, Prince William promised Catherine's parents that he would protect her to the best of his ability when she joined the royal family. And when he said that, he meant against the media. I don't think he ever anticipated that his brother would say things that put a target on, on Catherine's back. Because while Dece in December, the family was at Sandringham, we saw that, you know, big united front of everybody there for Christmas. Um, while people did criticize Andrew and Fergie's presence there, it was nice to see the whole family there together at Christmas. And it almost like kickstarted this new year uh, that people were excited about. But we forget that in November, Omid Scobie released Endgame and the Princess of Wales and King Charles were both accused of racism in the Dutch version that was leaked. So they had that kind of PR chaos hanging over their heads. It almost was like the wiped clean come Christmas time where they, sh they all share a united front and they're, you know, marching into church, loving on all the people waiting outside of church for them. Um, and then like a ton of bricks, we're hit mid-January with the fact that both the King and the Princess of Wales are having medical issues. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like 
I know that there's so much hurt in that family, but I do feel if they were to have some kind of reconciliation, it would almost make the family, number one, kind of seem more like a family <laughs> versus a institution. But also, I feel like it would make it stronger just because it's like, look what we went through. We went through a lot of shit as a family, and now we're on the other side of it. And those, you know, I don't know. I, I could see a lot of people in the UK, though, like almost looking down on the fact that they would forgive Harry <laughs> because there's so much hatred for for Harry over there. Um, what is the attitude towards Harry right now? Are, are people feeling any sympathy for him or starting to feel any better for him? Or there's still just a lot of hatred over there? Uh, I mean, polling wise, I think that he actually polls lower than Prince Andrew right now, what? which is oh, really? I know. I know, you know, there is a real resentment and you, you said that about Blake Lively, mm -hmm. about how, you know, we should be, we should show her grace because she didn't know. I think, um, first of all, I, I, I want to say, I think she was an easy target because she was the first one to apologize. And I thought that, that was really big of her to be like, I'm mortified. I had no idea. Um, and she was honestly still one of the i mean where kim kardashian still has on my way to find kate on her up on her instagram yeah but um i think that but no people, one had any idea so you gotta no, be like yeah, yeah no one yeah, had any idea that's yeah. why but, there but was my, so many conspiracy theories going around my point is i think that megan's going to have a hard time shaking the fact that she launched american orchard or american riviera orchard in the midst of the where is kate chaos um, I think people are going to be really unforgiving towards her over the fact, and it's, it, she didn't just launch it in the middle of all that, like total nightmare of a PR spree over where is Kate. Um, she also launched it in the middle of the Diana legacy awards while Prince William was on stage talking about the memory of his mother. She, mm -hmm. you know, sends out this release about, Oh, here, I've got a new Instagram account. I've got a new website. And that really rubs people the wrong way that the people that respect the monarchy they think that like she's overstepping mm -hmm. yeah i wonder like in the middle of the kate stuff i i can't necessarily say that was a terrible move on her part because she didn't know just like the rest of the world if she wasn't tied into the family and didn't know this stuff like what is she supposed to do just hold on her brands releasing stuff that's probably been in the works for months and months and months the doing it at the time where your husband's talking about his mom is a little funky. <laughs> that, well, and that it was weird too with. because Prince Harry was so Prince William was actually at the award show, the Diana Legacy Awards. Prince uh, Prince Harry did it via video link. Then we find out he's on the slopes with Corey Gamble, and so it is sort of annoying that Kim Kardashian would post "Where is Kate?" at the time Prince Harry is physically with Corey. Because yeah, it's al it almost gives her permission to joke about it because Prince Harry is with her mom's basically, basically, like, what do you call that legally? I mean, legally, partner. they're probably it's married in some her, states. Yeah, it's, a, it's her partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kind of like um, her stepdad kind of ish. <laughs> so it just, it felt, it felt icky. But um, yeah, I think that uh, I, I've seen the View co-hosts apologize. Mm -hmm. Stephen Colbert gave a kind of apology last night. Uh, so you are seeing some people that feel, you okay, know. But do like you feel, do you feel like these people need to apologize? Is I guess my question. Do you feel like they need to apologize to Kate because they made a joke, or do you feel like? listen, people make jokes all the time. Once they know now, this is the time that if they were to make a joke at this point, that's when you call them an, an asshole. I think that it shows that they have a heart that they've apologized. I think it shows that they have a good moral compass to say, Hey, guess mm -hmm. what? I, fa I, I found out this at the same time you did. I wish I would have made that comment. And you know, it, it, that to me says, Hey, I'm human. I'm a, I'm human. And I'm, this is some vulnerability and transparency that makes you even, you, you might like me even more. So I don't mind that. Um, you know, I think that that says I've, I've, I've gotten some new re information and I'm reacting to it. And then if anybody brings it up six months from now, anybody else can point to that video and say, lay off. They didn't know. Yeah. So a lot of people are talking about this uh, communications assistant job that has been posted by the royal family or by the, the palace. Um, 
<laughs> I saw that I got to imagine they're getting bazillions of applications. Uh, is this something that you find interesting? Is it something that you would apply for ever? Or is it like, oh, this is not a really exciting job? I think it's an exciting job. It's probably a very difficult job today. It'll become yeah. an easier job. Um, but I, I think that it's an exciting job. I mean, it's this, the last three months are not a good example of this. And I wish I could have, I wish I did have uh, an example of, of, because there are so many stories we find out after the fact, and we had no idea that there was a chess game happening in the background. Um, but there is a lot of crisis management and there is a lot of kill this story. We're going to kill this story because it's embarrassing. And we're going to slide in this story um, just to ensure that that story dies. I mean, there are a lot of instances like that. So I think working in that office has got to be fun. You get a lot of secrets. You you're way you're way in the know and you get access to royalty, which is very cool. And I mean, you have that on your resume and you'll never have to sit through a job interview again. Uh, so I think that there are plenty of perks when it comes to working with the royal family. And typically uh, they do dominate in the communications department. This was just a hard three months. And I think I've said it. I think I've said, I said it to you before. William and Catherine were in a position to be stubborn from the get go because of their popularity. But add on the fact that she was really ill, then you're ha you're going to have a communications team that does exactly what you tell them to do, because, you know, you you have the upper hand here. Yeah. Here's a question for you, because you've covered the royal family for so long and you know the scrutiny that they're under, you know, that their lives aren't all, you know, rainbows and butterflies here, that it is hard work. And would you, if if you were given the choice, would you be a part of the royal family? <laughs> I would not. I, yeah. would, I would, I would not like, I, it is a, uh, it's a scrutiny that I, I could not, I can't, I can't deal with half. I don't check my Twitter replies anymore, even being associated in the way that I am with the Royal family. I mean, Dax, you, aside from knowing me, you and I've had a conversation about this before. Uh, and like I, I, I said previously, um, when I do interviews, you and I have had this conversation. You didn't give me a play by play of what we were going to talk about when I do. And you can attest for this, too, because I know you've done it, too. When we do international TV, they do not give us a play by play mm -hmm. of what we are asked questions. And we are given a two seconds to figure out what's going to come out of our mouths. And I have defended Catherine more than I've ever defended anything in my life over these last three months <laughs> when everybody was like, Oh, can you believe she photoshopped? I was on international television saying I photoshop at least three chins off my face before <laughs> everything goes on the internet. And I'm having people right now uh, contact me, harassing me for slamming Kate, saying, well, well, now maybe you'll stop slamming her now that we know. Dax, show me one example where I slammed her. I mean, I am so far far removed from the British royal family and the amount of negative attention I receive is mm -hmm. overwhelming. I don't check my Twitter replies. I deleted my Facebook. I make it very hard to, con to, to contact me because some people are crazy. So I can't imagine what it's like to be not only the princess of Wales, but Meghan Markle. I mean, I do sympathize with Meghan Markle because I get so much negative attention that I can't imagine what it what it must be like to be either one of them. And I, I, I love the royal family. I enjoy f covering the royal family, but um, people are critical of their clothing, their weight, their makeup their jewelry, their, the way they speak, the, you know, people just will tear into anything and absolutely everything about them. And thankfully they have a buffer, but I can't imagine they have a 24 hour buffer. I'm sure that they see a lot of it. And we know from the last few weeks that the Prince and Princess of Wales were aware of a lot of the things that were being said about them online. And it was upsetting to them. Yeah. I got to imagine like, do they, 
go online? Do they read headlines? Like I remember, and again, I don't know how realistic the crown is or whatever. Uh, I think there's aspects of it that are very realistic, the TV show, but I think there's other aspects that are just fictionalized because it makes good television. But in there, they would show like the newspapers being brought to the royal family every morning. And like, here's the seven newspapers. This is what they're all saying. I wonder if that stuff still happens. Like, here's the seven websites we want you to look at, and you can see the headlines, or it's, we'll let you know if there's something that pops up. But for the most part, ignore it. Uh, Don't read what's out there, because so much of it is fake. So much of it will take down your self-esteem. Like, I couldn't get up in the morning if I saw half the stuff that was written about me if I was Prince Harry or Meghan. Like, I don't think I'd get out of bed. Like it literally well, people are horrible. I have defended them and I have gotten like destroyed. So I can only imagine being them. Yeah. Like, and it's gotta be so much pressure. I can't imagine. Well, a friend of Prince William says that Harry, what well, Harry used to doom scroll. He probably has graduated from that. He probably doesn't do that anymore. Uh, but Prince William is typically brought stories to him specifically like, Hey, we're concerned about this. Uh, he does not sit online and look things up. Um, when it came to the conspiracy theories, apparently they had friends contacting them saying, hey, people are saying this up at the school. Like, you, you know, I am I just want you to know that this is what's being said. Mm-hmm. Um, and the king, so when Queen Elizabeth was alive, she did have all of those papers on display. That was important to her that she could look at those every day. And the king actually said, I, I don't, I don't want that kind of negativity in my life. So when it comes to what's in the king's house, it's, um, it's like magazines about architecture and um, home and gardening and things like that, where as the queen would have the Daily Express, the Daily Mail and all of those papers. So she knew what was going on and keeping up to date. The king is much more zen and and wants to know like how to like, how to have the perfect garden uh that's what he wants to read in his free time not the newspapers i i gotta wonder which way is better i mean clearly <laughs> she knew what the hell she was doing she was one smart lady one savvy 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 woman uh kinsey thank you so much for joining me um really just appreciate the knowledge that you have about the royal family and being able to discuss it because what's night nice. like i feel like so many people here in the u.s they don't know enough about the royal family and so it's like certain things that you know i see go up online i'm like these people have no idea what they're talking about you know (laughs) and (laughs) so it's nice to have someone on that truly has that insider information and knowledge and i see you everywhere all the time talking about the royals um so if you guys are out there and you are interested you want to know more head on over to listen to our podcast to die for daily uh and that's die like d-i like by, as in Princess Diana. So to die for daily podcast. She also has a website. Uh, you can follow Kinsey on her Instagram. She's all over social media. Uh, but she really has that insider scoop that people are craving right now. And she'll keep you up to date on all things royal. So thank, thank you. you. Thank of you. Of course. Um, and if you guys want to follow uh, Hollywood Raw Podcast, make sure you head on over. We got our private Facebook group called Off the Record. Um, this is where we chat directly with you guys, the fans, uh, where we answer your questions. A lot of posts going up this week with P. Diddy and all the craziness surrounding him. Uh, but we got all of our social media handles at Hollywood Raw, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, where you can watch the video element of this. And then make sure you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys so much for your time. I'm Dax. Adam, uh, you can find him at Adam Glenn, and we will see you next time. Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.